Hi guys, Virtus Education with the third video of the Unreal Development Kit beginner series. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the user interface to get you familiar with the environment ready for the upcoming tutorials. And hopefully you should be able to follow along and work easily with the, uh, the uh, SDK itself and have no errors and hopefully just really really pick up on the lovely intuitive interface that UDK has. So I'm actually going to start off with what you are presented with directly in front of you as soon as you open up the engine on launch. So uh, you can see we've got a few main things. We've got three things here. First and foremost we have the welcome screen, we also have the content browser, and we also have the actual engine itself in the background. So first I'm going to start off with the uh, welcome screen. Well, this is essentially a screen where it welcomes you and gives you options to go to a bunch of their social media pages, such as the forums, video tutorials, which I which, uh, which I wished was mine being showcased, and it also allows you to uh, open a new map or create, uh, open existing map or create a new one. So I can just go ahead and click existing map and it will give us a choice to open up a map which is already made and one, for example one of the showcase ones or one that even you have already made and have saved somewhere on your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and press new map to give you an example of what comes up. So if you press new map, it's going to ask you to choose a preset, a template uh, from which you have to choose from. So over here you've got a blank map which gives you pretty much absolutely nothing, it's all black. And uh, if you go in there'll be nothing there, no game mode play, uh, uh, applied to it, no lighting, just nothing. Or additionally, it also gives you the option to choose from a template. I'm pretty sure you are familiar with a template, uh, what one is, uh, but if you aren't, it's essentially uh, a preset which gives you a bunch of pre-made stuff. So let's say you choose uh, night lighting, it's going to give you a sort of night environment with skybox lighting, um, appropriate fog and so on and so forth, and uh, usually they look sexy and just saves you time. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and that's what we're going to be working with for the sake of uh, just graphical fidelity because it looks sexy and it's very visually appealing and hopefully your eyes won't hurt too much whenever I start making something with it. So uh, that's the welcome screen out of the way and uh, next I'm going to go over the content browser as that is right in front of you upon launch. This is essentially the library of all assets you make for your game or even uh, preset assets. These assets will range from things like animations, to materials, particle systems, skeletal meshes, sounds, uh, models and so on and so forth. Uh, for example, let's say I go to static meshes I just did, I can choose something from uh, the preset models which are here and just go ahead and drag it in and that's usually how things uh, happen. And whenever you link to something you can just grab the uh, the reference link or you know the location of it from here. For example, I can go right click and uh, copy name, copy full name to clipboard, uh, if we're doing some programming we we'll put it in there. Or we can just drag it in, drag in something and apply it to the environment, whether it's materials or a model or something like that. So I just showed you an example of some models going in. I also showed you some examples of a really, really disgusting and somewhat eye rapey uh, material going in at the same time. Essentially, uh, it's pretty much its use is just a whole stuff for all the different assets you have. So let's get that out of the way. And I'm also going to go over Kismet uh, before I go into uh, the direct environment. This is essentially UDK's uh, visual scripting interface. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with what programming is. And this essentially allows you to do it uh, without any programming uh, code at all. So let's say I go ahead and right click anywhere in the content area here. I can right click, press new event variable action which would be like a method or you know all that cool stuff so we've got variables events we've got uh, objects and so on and so forth so let's say go ahead and press new variable i'm going to create in an integer which is essentially a value i'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with it or i can even add in a bool which is like true or false and stuff and i can also add an event such as level loaded uh and you can also apply actions to that, so it changes or attaches something or just whatever you want to do with your programming. But that should give you a general uh, understanding of what Kismet actually is. So let's close that out of the way and go on to um, 
uh, the direct interface. So I'm going to start off with the most uh, obvious thing we have here, which is the menu strip. You know, file, edit, view, brush, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure you should be familiar with what a menu strip actually is. This is them in as you actually see them in many different applications. For example, if I bring in Audacity onto the screen, which I'm using to record my audio right now, you can see that it has a menu strip up here, which has like file, open, save, and so on and so forth. Edit, uh, manipulate, adding and uh, adding uh, processes, operating something, and you know, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to give you an example. If I go to file, you can see we've got new, we've got open, we've got save, as you usually see. Edit essentially allows you to manipulate something, cut, copy, paste, translation tools, rotate, scale, uh, move, and so on and so forth, and select. View essentially allows you to uh, edit the parameters of uh, something you're viewing or completely toggle it on and off. For example, over here, we go to detail mode. You can see that we can change the detail to low, we can change it to high, we can change it to medium, or if we go and look at some of the other parameters that you can just toggle on and off straight away, uh, such as show transform widget, which is that, you can uh, pretty much get rid of it uh, completely, which I don't like to do, but uh, if you want to take something off, it's obviously going to be in the viewing settings. And we also have access to view some of the specific windows, for example, the content browser, the tab and the tabs inside of it, or the world properties, actor properties. For example, if I go ahead and press world properties, we have the persistent settings. For example, if we go to rendering, we can, we can look for the post-processing that we have here. We can check the game type to change the game type for the map in question and so on. Brush, uh, I'll go into what brush, uh, brushes are, but, uh, Essentially here you can add CSG operations builds, you can add your light, you can render, so to speak, your lighting, your AI paths and your geometry because UDK isn't necessarily dynamic right now. And we also have play which is essentially just debug debugging, for example like playing on a mobile uh, preview which will essentially allow you to walk around in your game, test it to see if there's any errors, bugs, glitches and so on and so forth. You can also do the same to play in viewport and in editor. Uh, tools. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that. Same with preferences and help. But uh, most of these options that you have here, some of them will actually be on the uh, direct interface here. For example, if you go to uh, tools, you should be able to go to. Uh, oh, oh, god damn it! Uh, you know I'm not going to bother. But uh, most of them will be on here. For example, you've got your edit tools, your translation tools are up here, which is essentially move. We've got rotate, we've got uh, scaling, and then we've got non-scaling. We've got uh, file, save, open. Exactly here, so file, open, and then we've got the edit, and then we've got some of the view settings, and then we've got some of the build settings, and we've got the play settings over here. It's actually in order and just really, really easy to work with. So uh, thank you, Epic Games, for doing that. It's really intuitive and really, really easy to use. So uh, let's start off and go over uh, some of the things here. So uh, as you can see, uh, most of these should be familiar with uh, from what I've already gone over. Just uh, hover over them and you'll see the name, try guess what they are. But uh, some of them uh, are pretty self-explanatory, for example, scaling, saving, and building, as I already explained, and uh, obviously debugging. So uh, that's all out of the way. Let's move on to uh, the different modes that you actually have here, uh, over here. So UDK actually provides a whole bunch of different uh, modes to edit and manipulate your game. For example, we have terrain editing mode, which is used for sculpting your terrain. Same with the landscape mode, but foliage mode allows you to paint on foliage onto your terrain. Uh, we have geometry mode, which essentially allows you to manipulate and work with your geometry in the form of your BSP brush more by adding more complex operations. We have uh, mesh painting, we have texture alignment, and so on. Just try open up a few of these and experiment with what they actually do. Next up, we have brushes. So... UDK actually gives you a brush uh, for BSP blocking, which you have available to you uh, right here. And essentially, you can create different primitives using this. And there's a few different brush primitives uh, that we've actually been provided with. For example, we have cylinder, we have uh, curved staircase, cone, cube, uh, plane, 
staircases, spirals, tetrahedrons, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, brushes are no good if we have nothing to actually paint with. So I'm just going to create uh, something here. And uh, why can't I do this? I can't move it for some reason because I've apparently managed to break it already. But nonetheless, um, we can... Uh, ooh. Oh, that's not good. But uh, anyway, uh, we use CSG operations over here to decide what we actually do with our brush. So, uh, for example, if we go ahead and press Add, it's actually going to add something into uh, the scene. In this case, it added that really, really big uh, emissive block, or you can even subtract, you can intersect, and so on. And volumes are essentially an area in uh, in which there is a special effect applied to it. Uh, for example, if we go ahead and choose one, we can get things like physics volumes, we can get gravity volumes, gravity volumes where you're going to have a different level of gravity, uh, trigger volumes is going to set off something which can be interacted with your programming or kismet, a lava volume is going to kill you inside of it, kill Z is going to kill you instantly, um, post-processing is going to be color grading, and so on. So hopefully this side's out of the way, and now we're also going to proceed to go on to the different viewing modes that we have here. So firstly, you have the viewport type. You can actually have multiple viewports. Keep that in mind, and you can view those by pressing here, and you have all four. I usually like to work with this. So you can just go ahead and go through your viewport type, ranging from a top-down to a, uh, a wireframe view to an actual perspective view where you actually see what the player will see. And you also have real-time mode, which will essentially play things like particle systems, animations, and so on. And then you have physical uh, viewing modes, which will affect what you see in your perspective view. For example, we have our wireframe view, where it just shows lines and vertices. We have unlit. Uh, which just has no lighting, we have lit where it does, we have detail lighting, which is uh, lighting, uh, just lighting, no diffuse, but with normal maps, lighting only is the same, but without it, and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm not really going to go into things like light complexity, texture density, and all that cool stuff. Well, it's not really cool stuff, it's boring stuff, we won't really use it too much. Uh, we also have game view over here, which essentially gets rid of all your icons, your brushes and so on so you can actually see exactly what the play is going to see we also have lock viewports so you can't actually interact with it uh, we also have lock selected actors to camera do not press that this is the bane of a game developers existence if you click it and click something else uh, that object is going to move with the camera as so I just moved uncheck it and if I move to the side now uh, my brush should be up in the air where I left my camera. We also have level streaming previews and post-processing. Post-processing is color grading. You can just toggle that on and off. However, you won't be able to see that as of right now as, um, as you can't actually, as we don't actually have any post-processing effects applied. We have camera movement speed, which is pretty self-explanatory. I just turned it up. It's going to move faster. Turn up some more, and we're moving incredibly fast. And if I turn it down, it's moving nice and slow, and it's a pace that we can actually work with. And lastly, we have play and viewport, which I believe I already explained. You press it, you you go into the game, and you actually play what the player will play, just as you can up here with the different debugging types, including uh, that of the mobile view uh, viewport, uh, mobile preview, which I'm actually moving about in at the moment, and looks like shit because uh, mobiles can't handle too much, but nonetheless, you can play in a mobile version, not too sexy lighting, skyboxes have been severely compressed, and so on. So uh, hopefully that should be everything in the environment that I can think of as of right now. I don't want to go into too much detail, as we do have some time constraints. However, in the next video, I'm actually going to be going over specific areas relevant to the topic in more detail, but you should be familiar with it ready for the upcoming videos. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. And if you think there's anything at all that I missed out, feel free to comment, and I will explain it over in great detail in the comments. So I will see you next time.